Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our production of the Mikado. Due to some unforeseen circumstances, we are operating with four fewer cast members than we'd expected last Sunday. I'm sure it won't spoil your enjoyment of the show. And the part of Yum Yum tonight will be taken by Liz Black. Do enjoy the performance. <coughs>
Discharging this delicate office, I met Yum Yum. We loved each other at once, but she was betrothed to her guardian, Coco, the local tailor, and I saw that my suit was hopeless. <laughs> Overwhelmed with despair, I quitted the town. Judge of my delight when I heard a month ago that Coco had been condemned to death for flirting. I hurried back at once in the hope of finding Yum Yum at liberty to listen to my prophecy. Now, it is true that Coco was condemned to death for flirting, but she was reprieved at the last moment and raised to the exalted rank of Lord High Executioner under the following remarkable circumstances. <laughs> A plan whereby young men might best be staying. So he decreed in words of six feet all who flirted, lived or wit, unless more you be alleviated. Should form with me be headed, be headed, be headed. Form with me be headed. And I expect you all agree that he was right to slow degree. I'm 
future of Titi Pool? Why, that's the highest rank a citizen can attain. It is. Our logical Mikado, seeing no moral difference between the dignified judge who condemns a criminal to die and the industrious mechanic who carries out the sentence, has rolled the two officers into one, and every judge is now his own executioner. But how good of you, for I see that you are a nobleman of the highest rank to condescend to tell all this to me. A mere second trombone. Don't mention it. I am, in point of fact, a particularly haughty and exclusive person of pre-Adamite ancestral descent. You'll understand this when I tell you that I can trace my ancestry back to a protoplasmal, primordial, atomic globule. <laughs> Consequently, my family pride is something inconceivable. But I struggle hard with this defect. I mortify my pride continually when all the great officers of state resigned in a body because they were too proud to serve under an ex-tailor, did I not unhesitatingly accept all their posts at once? And the salaries attached to them, we <laughs> did. It is therefore my degrading duty to serve under this upstart as First Lord of the Treasury, Lord Chief Justice, Commander-in-Chief, Lord High Admiral, Master of the Buckhound, Groom of the Bad Stairs, Archbishop of <laughs> Lord Mayor, both acting and elect, all rolled into one, and at a salary, I, a poor bar, paid for his services. I, a salary minion, but I do it. It revolts me, but I do it. And it does you credit. Oh, I don't stop at that. I dine with middle class people on reasonable terms. I dance at cheap suburban parties for a moderate fee. I accept refreshments at any hands. However lowly, <laughs> I also retail state secrets for a very low figure. <laughs> for instance, any further information regarding Yum Yum would come under the head State Secret. <laughs> Another insult, and I think a light one.
the pizza loving Aristo claims he cannot sweat. The disgraced royalist, he's off the civil list. And people who didn't wear a mask are splattered in your face. They'd none of them be missed. They'd none of them be missed. Then the party donor businessmen who made the PPE. That wasn't fit for purpose for a much inflated fee. The lady from the Met Police dressed up like a guy who hadn't noticed parties as she didn't like to cry. And that singular anomaly, the Novak Djokovic. Well, I don't think he'd be missed. I'm sure he'd not be missed. He's got him on the list. He's got him on the list. But I don't think he'd be missed. I'm sure he'd not be missed. There's the Oscar-winning actor who slipped Chris Rock in the face. The better pugilist. I've got him on the list. And the irritating teenager who could be Jackie's bride. The climate activist. Blah, 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 blah. And the apologetic states of the party-going kind, such as Alexander, Boris, the Fevy, Fwah, fwah, fwah. <laughs> There's Jezza Corbin, Private Pike, and Donald, you know who. He's the guy who thinks that Duco is a Tanya Titi. But it really doesn't matter who you put upon the list. They'd none of them be missed. They'd none of them be missed. You may put them on the list. You may put them on the list. But they'd none of them be missed. They'd none of them be missed. <laughs> it seems that these celebrations in connection with my approaching marriage must last a week. I should like to do handsomely and should like to consult you as to how much I should spend upon them. Certainly, which of my capacities as First Lord of the Treasury, Attorney General, Lord Chamberlain, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Privy Purse, or Private Secretary? Um, suppose we say it's Private Secretary. As your Private Secretary, I should say that as the city will have to pay for it. Don't stint yourself, do it well. Exactly, as the city will have to pay for it. That is your advice. As private secretary, of course, as chancellor of the exchequer, <laughs> I am bound to see that due economy is observed. But you said just now, don't stint yourself, do it well. As private secretary, and now you say that due economy must be observed. As Chancellor of the Exchequer. I see. Come over here where the Chancellor can't hear us. Now, as my solicitor, how do you advise me to deal with the difficulty? As your solicitor, I shall have no hesitation in saying... Transit. Thank you. I will. If it were not that as Lord Chief Justice, I am bound to see that the law is not violated. I see. Come over here where the Chief Justice can't hear us. Now, as First Lord of the Treasury. As First Lord of the Treasury, I could propose a special vote which would cover all expenses. If it were not that as leader of the opposition, it would be my duty to resist it tooth and nail. Or, as paymaster general, I could so cook the accounts that as Lord High Auditor, I should never discover the fraud. But then, as Archbishop of it would be my duty to denounce my dishonesty and give myself into my own custody as first commissioner of police. That's extremely awkward. I don't say that these distinguished people couldn't be square. But I think it's only right to tell you that they wouldn't be sufficiently degraded in their own estimation if they were not insulted with a very considerable bribe. The matter will have my careful consideration. But see, 
my right to be in her two sisters approach. Now, uh, any little compliment on your part, such as an abject grovel in a characteristic Japanese attitude, uh, would the esteemed a favour? No money, no grovel. Uh, oh, oh, oh.
sent me? Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, one at a time, if you please. If you please. This is the gentleman who used to play so beautifully on the, um, on the... On the Marie Parade. Yes, I think that was the name of the instrument. <laughs> Sir, I have the misfortune to love your war, yum yum. Oh, I know I deserve your anger. The anger? Ah, not a bit of it, my boy. Why? I love her myself. <laughs> Charming little girl, isn't she? Pretty eyes, nice hair. <laughs> Charming little thing altogether. Very glad to have my opinion backed by a competent authority. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Take him away. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but what's this? Customer come to try on? <laughs> uh, that is a tremendous swell. Oh, go swell. away, little girls, go away, girls, dears. I haven't got time to talk to little girls like you. Go away. <laughs> Allow me to present you, Poobah. Uh, these are my three wards. The one in the middle is my bride elect. What do you want me to do to them? Mind, I will not kiss them. <laughs> no, no, you shan't kiss them. A little bow, you nothing. You need me, you know. Goes against the grain. They're not young ladies. They're young persons. Oh, oh come, 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 make an effort. There's a good nobleman. Well, I shan't mean it. I have to say, oh, hold it no, little girl, hold it no, to a young person. I'm not used to say, hold it no, little girl, hold it no, to anyone underneath the rank of a uh, stockbroker. Oh, don't laugh at him. He can't help it. He's under treatment. <laughs> don't mind them. Uh, they, they don't know the uh, delicacy of uh, your position. We know how delicate it is, don't we? I should think we did. How a gentleman of your importance can do it at all is a thing I never can, never shall understand. <laughs>
night and day for three weeks in the belief that your garden was beheaded. And now I find you are about to be married to him this afternoon. Alas, yes. But you do not love him. Alas, no. Ah, modified rapture. But why do you not refuse him? What good would that do? He's my guardian. And he wouldn't let me marry you. But I would wait until you were of age. Oh, you forget that in Japan, girls do not arrive at years of discretion until they are 50. True. From 17 to 49 are considered years of indiscretion. Besides, a wandering minstrel who plays a wind instrument outside tea houses is hardly a fitting husband for the ward of the Lord High Executioner. But, but, uh, shall I tell her? Yes, she will not betray me. What if it should prove that, after all, I am no musician? There! I was certain of it! Directly I heard you play! What if it should prove that, after all, I am no other than the son of His Majesty, the Mikado? The son of the Mikado? Then why is, are you disguised, and what has your highness done? And will your highness promise never to do it again? Some years ago, I had the misfortune to captivate Katisha, an elderly lady of my father's court. She misconstrued my... <laughs> customary affability into expressions of affection and claimed me marriage under my father's law. My father, the Lucius Junius Brutus of his race, ordered me to marry her within a week or perish ignominiously on the scaffold. That night I fled his court, and assuming the disguise of a second trombone, I joined the band in which you found me, where I first had the happiness of seeing you. If you please, I think your highness had better not come too near. The uh, laws against flirting are excessively severe. But we are quite alone, and no one can see us. Oh, even so, that doesn't make it right. To flirt is capital. It is. Capital. And we must obey the law. Do you take the law? Oh, I wish it would, but it won't. If it were not for the law, we should now be sitting side by side, like that. Yes, instead of being obliged to sit half a mile off, like this. We should be gazing into each other's eyes. Breathe it, breathe, breathe it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> breathing like that. Breathing sign of unutterable love. Oh. Oh, like that. With our arms around each other's waist. Like that. Yes, if it wasn't for the law. If it wasn't for the law. As it is, we couldn't do anything of the kind. Not for worlds. Being engaged to Coco. Being engaged to Coco. <laughs>
like future happiness is wrapped up in that little parcel. Really, it hardly seems worthwhile. Half matrimony. Now then, what's this? Can't, can't you see him still in the crazy? You, you, you've interrupted an apostrophe, sir. I am the bearer of a letter from His Majesty the Mikado. A letter? Mm -hmm. From the Mikado? What in the world could he have to say to me? Oh, here it is at last. The uh, Mikado is struck by the fact that there have been no executions in Tizipu for over a year. And decrees that unless somebody is beheaded within a month, the post of Lord I Executioner will be abolished and the city reduced to the rank of a village. But that will involve us all in irretrievable ruin. Yes. There's no help for it. I shall have to execute somebody at once. The only question is, who shall it be? Well, it seems unkind to say so, but as you're already under sentence of death for flirting, everything seems to point to you. To me? What do you mean? I, I, I can't face you myself. Um, why not? Why not? <laughs> Well, in the first place, uh, self-decapitation is a very difficult, not to say very dangerous thing to attempt. And in the second, it's suicide. And suicide is a capital offence. That is so, no doubt. We might reserve that point. True, it could be argued six months hence in front of the full court. Besides, I don't see how a man can cut up his own head. A man might try. Well, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> Even if you only succeeded in cutting it half off, well, that would be something. It would be taken as a desire to comply with the imperial will. No, but there I am adamant. As official headsman, my reputation is at stake. And I cannot consent to embark upon a professional operation without seeing it to a successful result. This professional conscientiousness is highly creditable to you, but it leaves out in a very awkward position. My dear sir, the awkwardness of your position is grace itself when compared to that of a man engaged in the act of cutting off his own head. I'm afraid that unless you can obtain a substitute... Ha! Ah. Substitute, nothing easier. Pooba, I appoint you Lord High Substitute. I should be delighted. Such an appointment would fulfill my fondest dreams. But no, I must set bounds to my insatiable ambition. <laughs> Recollect what 
forget. And so, although I need to go and make the pie to write the pie to take the line of the hero by me. Japan and 
traveling Kirklees for a couple of years. I might contrive to forget her. Oh, no, I, I, I don't think you could uh, forget Yum Yum that easily. I mean, what is more miserable than a love blighted life? True. Life without Yum Yum, why? Seems absurd. And yet, there are a good many people in the world who have to endure it. Poor fellows, yes. And you're quite right not to be of their number. I won't be of their number. I'll show you how we'll manage it. Let me marry Yum Yum tomorrow, and in a month you can behave me. Uh, no, I uh, draw the line at Yum Yum. Very well. If you can draw the line, so can I. Oh, no, 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 stop, stop, be, stop, be, be reasonable. How can I consent to your money, Yum Yum, when I'm going to marry Yum Yum myself? My good sir, she'll be a widow in a month, and you can marry her then. Yes, I quite see that, but... Oh dear, but my position during that month will be most unpleasant, most unpleasant. Not half as unpleasant as my position at the end of it. Uh, yes, but... Oh dear, uh, well, well... I agree. After all, it's only <coughs> putting off my marriage for a month. But um, you'll not prejudice her against me, will you? You see, um, I'm educating her to be my wife. She's been um, taught to, to think of me as a wise and good man. Now, I wouldn't want her view on that point disturbed. But trust me, she shall never learn the truth of me. Thank you. 
empty compliment to cry long life to Nanky Poo. But as one month you have to live as fellow citizen, this toast with three times three will give long life. Oh! 
Yes, I am indeed beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes I sit and wonder in my artless Japanese way why it is that I'm so much more attractive than anybody else in the whole world. <laughs> Could this be vanity? No, nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and take after my mother. Bah, now some bridegroom will be depressed by this sort of thing. A month, 
Why, what's a month? Who says 24 hours make a day? There's a popular impression to that effect. <laughs> then we'll face it. We'll call each second a minute, each minute an hour, each hour a day, and each day a year. At that rate, with about 30 years of married happiness before us. Mm, and at that rate, this interview has lasted four hours and three quarters. How time flies when one is thoroughly enjoying oneself. That's the way to look at it. Don't let me downhearted. There's a silver lining to every cloud. Certainly. Let's be perfectly happy. By all means, let's let's thoroughly enjoy ourselves. It's absurd to cry. Quite ridiculous. <laughs> Me. I'm afraid we're distressing you. No, no, no. 
I must learn to live with it. But, but please, do it by degrees. Uh, begin by putting your arm around her waist. Like that? Yes, let, let me get used to that first. Well, wouldn't you like to retire? It must be painful for you to see it so affectionate together. No. I must learn to bear it. Now, <laughs> oblige me by allowing her head to rest on your shoulder. Like that? <laughs> yes. I'm obliged to. Now, kiss her. Oh, thank you. This is simply torture. Oh, come, come, bear up. After all, it's only for a month. No, there's no use deluding oneself with false hopes. What do you mean? My child, my poor child. How should I break it to her? My little bride it was to have been. What's to have been? You never can be mine. Oh, I certainly am. You see, I just ascertained that by the uh, Ricardo's law, when a married man is beheaded, his wife is um, oh. buried alive. Buried alive? Yes, buried alive. But it's a most unpleasant death. But. But who did you get that from? Oh, from Pooh Bar, Pooh Bar, and Pooh Bar. <laughs> They're my solicitors. But he made a mistake. Uh, no, no, no. So I thought. So I also consulted the Lord Chief Justice, Master of the Rolls, <laughs> uh, Judge Ordinary, and Sue Gray. <laughs> <laughs> they were all of the same opinion. Never knew such unanimity on a point of law in my life. But stop a bit. This law has never been put into force. Not yet. You see, <coughs> flirting is the only crime punishable by decapitation, and married men never flirt. No, of course they don't. <laughs> I quite forgot that. Well, I suppose I may think it's that my dream of happiness is at an end. Darling, I don't want to appear selfish, <laughs> and I love you with all my heart. I don't suppose. I shall ever love anybody else half as much. <laughs> but when I agreed to marry you, my own, <laughs> I had no idea <laughs> but, <laughs> that I would be buried alive in a month. Nor I. It's the very first I've heard of it. It makes a difference, doesn't it? It does make a difference, of course. I mean, burial alive. It's such a... Death. I call it a beast of a death. You see my difficulty. Yes, yes, and I see my own. If I insist on your carrying out your promise, I doom you to a hideous death. If I release you, you marry Coco at once. <laughs> Yeah. 
nice old fellow, I'm sure you are. You see, uh, I'm quite helpful. <laughs> I quite see that. Yes, I can't conceive of anything more distressing than to have one's marriage broken off at the last moment. But you'll not be disappointed in the wedding. You shall come to mine. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's awfully kind of you, but it's not possible. Why so? Today I die. I cannot live without Yum Yum. <coughs> this afternoon I perform the happy dispatch. What do you mean? I, uh, I'm sorry. I cannot permit that. Can't allow it. Why not? Well, hang it all. <laughs> You're under contract to die in a month's time at the hands of the public executioner. If you kill yourself, well, what's to become of me? Why, I'd have to be executed in your place. It would certainly seem so. Now, now, now then, Lord Mayor, what is it? The Ricardo and his suite and a bloody the city and will be here in ten minutes. The Ricardo? Oh, no doubt to see whether, I, whether or not I've carried out his orders. Now, now look, this is getting serious. A bargain's a bargain. And you cannot be allowed to frustrate the edge of justice by committing suicide. Now, as a man of honour and a gentleman, you are bound to die ignominiously at the hands of the public executioner. Very well, then. Behead me. What? Now? Certainly. At once. Don't be tough, Tom Tom! Don't be tough! My dear sir, I don't go around being prepared to chop up a gentleman's head at a moment's notice. I never kill a blue butter. Still, as Lord High Executioner. As Lord High Executioner, I've got to behead him in a month. <coughs> I'm not ready yet. I don't know how it's done. I'm taking lessons. I'm going to start with a guinea pig and work my way through the animal kingdom until I get to the second trombone. Uh, why, you, you don't suppose that I accepted the post of Lord High Executioner if I hadn't have thought that the duties were purely nominal? Uh, I can't kill you. I can't kill anything. I, I can't kill anybody. <laughs> come, come, my good fellow. We all have unpleasant duties to perform at times. After all, what is it? I don't mind. Why should you? <laughs> Remember, sooner or later, it must be done. Must it? I'm not so sure about that. What do you mean? Well, why should I kill you when an affidavit to the effect that I beheaded you would do just as well? Here are plenty of witnesses. Uh, the Lord Chief Justice, Lord High Admiral, <laughs> First Lord of the Treasury, and Chief Commissioner of Police. But where are they? There they are. <laughs> They'll swear to it, won't you? Am I to understand that all as high officers of state are to perjure ourselves to ensure your safety. You'll be grossly insulted as usual. Will the insult be cash down or at a date? It will be contactless. <laughs> well, it will be a useful discipline. Very good. Choose your fiction and I shall endorse it. <laughs> Family pride. How do you like that, me book? But I tell you that life without yum yum. Yum 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 yum, bother yum yum. Commissioner, go and fetch yum yum. Now look, go away and, and never, never yum back again. <laughs> ah, here she is. Yum yum, are you particularly busy? Uh, not particularly. You've got five minutes to spare? Yes. Well then, go with his grace, the Archbishop of Titipu, and he will marry you at once. Oh, but if I'm to be buried alive. Now don't ask questions and do as I say. Nanky Poo will explain all. Yes, but what? not for worlds. <coughs> then Mercado is here, no doubt to see whether I carried out his decree. And if he finds you alive, I shall have the greatest of difficulty in trying to explain the time ahead of you. Yes, no, no, no. Close thing, that. For well, here he comes. Yeah. 
being permitted to welcome your majesty. I, I guess the object of your majesty's visit, your wishes have been attended to. An execution has taken place. Oh, you've had an execution, have you? Uh, yes, sir. The, the coroner has just had me a certificate. I am the coroner. <laughs> And this is the certificate of his death. At Titty Poo, in the presence of the Lord Chancellor, Lord Chief Justice, Attorney General, Secretary of State for the Home Department, Lord Mayor, and Groom of the Second Floor Front. They were all present, Your Majesty. <laughs> I counted them myself. Very good house. I wish I'd been in time for the performance. Oh, a, a tough fellow he was, too. A man of gigantic strength. His struggles were terrific. It was a really remarkable scene. Describe it. <laughs> the criminal tried as he dropped him down in a state of wild alarm. With a frightful, frantic, fearful frown, I bared my big right arm. I seized him by his little pigtail as on his knees and heel. As he squirmed and struggled and gurgled and ruggled, I drew my sneaker sneak. My sneaker sneak. Oh, never shall I forget the fright of the shriek and shriek and bleed. As I gnashed my teeth as from its sheath, I drew. I speak a Surprised, he fled from one soul 
Lovely. That's not true. No. You hold that I am not beautiful because my face is plain. But you know nothing. You are still unenlightened. Learn then that it is not in the face alone that beauty is to be sought. My face is unattractive. It is. <laughs> but I have a left shoulder blade. That is a miracle of loveliness. People come miles to see it. My right elbow has a fascination you can resist. Allow me. Oh. Oh. It is on you Tuesdays and Fridays on presentation of visiting card. As for my circulation, it is the largest in the world. <laughs> and yet he fled. And is now masquerading in this town, disguised as uh, the second trombone. A, a second, second trombone? trombone? Yes. Yeah. Would it be troubling you too much if I asked you to produce him? He goes by the name of... Nanky Poo. Uh, Nanky Poo. It, it, it's quite easy. That, that is, it's rather difficult. In point of fact, he's gone abroad. Gone abroad? His address? Valley Road, Thornhill. <laughs> what is it? What's the matter? Selena, his name. Nanky Poo. Beheaded this morning. Oh, where shall I find another? Dear, 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 this is very tiresome. My poor fellow, in your anxiety to carry out my wishes, you have beheaded the heir to the throne of Japan. <laughs> I beg to offer an unqualified apology. <laughs> I desire to associate with that expression of regret. We really hadn't the least notion. Of course not. How could you? <laughs> it was no fault of yours. If a gentleman of exalted rank chooses to disguise himself as a second trombone, he must take the consequences. It really distresses me to see you take on so. I've no doubt he thoroughly deserved all he got. Oh, oh, we are infinitely obliged to your majesty. Much obliged, your majesty. Very much obliged, your majesty. <laughs> obliged? Not a bit. Don't mention it. How could you tell? Of course we couldn't tell who the gentleman really was. It wasn't written on his forehead, you know. <laughs> it might have been on his pocket handkerchief. <laughs> but of course, Japanese don't use pocket handkerchiefs. <laughs> 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 I forget the punishment for compassing the death of the heir apparent. Punishment? Yes. Something lingering with boiling oil in it, I fancy. Something of that sort. I think boiling oil occurs in it somewhere, but I can't be sure. I know it's something humorous, <laughs> but lingering. With either boiling oil or... Um, Melted lead. <laughs> come, come now, don't fret. I'm not a bit angry. Uh, if, your, if your majesty will accept our assurance, we really have not the least idea. Of course. I didn't know anything about it. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the pathetic part of it. The fool of an act states, compassing the death of the heir apparent. There's not a word about a mistake. No. no. Or not knowing. No. Or having no notion? No. Or not being there? No. There should be, of course. Yes. yes. But there isn't. Oh. That's the slovenly way in which these acts are always drawn. However, cheer up. It'll be all right. I'll have it altered. Oh. Next session. Oh. <laughs> now, let's see about your execution, shall we? Will after luncheon suit you? Can you wait till then? Oh, yeah. yes, we can, can wait, wait till then. then. Then we'll make it after lunch. I don't want any lunch. <laughs> I'm very sorry for you all, but it's an unjust world. 
and virtue is triumphant only in theatrical performances. <laughs> See how the fates their gifts allot, for A is happy, B is not, yet B is worthy, I dare say, of more prosperity than A. Yes, be more worthy. Spirit. 
when Cathy shall be married, existence will be as welcome as the flowers in spring. <laughs> Me of my love, 
But vengeance pursues. They are heating the cauldron. Kesha, feel a sapling at your feet. Kesha, a mercy. Mercy? <coughs> have you mercy on him? See here, you. You have slain my love. He did not love me, but he would have loved me in time. I am an acquired taste. Only the educated palate can appreciate me. I was educating his palate when he left me. Well, he is dead, and where shall I find another? It takes years to train a man to love me. I might have gone through the weary round, and at the same time, call mercy for you, who robbed me of my prey. I mean my pupil. Just as his education was on the point of completion, Oh, where shall I find another? Where shall I find another? Here. What? <laughs> Shrink not from me. Keisha, for years I have loved you with a way of passion. They slowly but surely consume me very vitals. If there is aught of a woman's mercy in your soul, shrink not away from a lovesick suppliant whose very fibre thrills at the tiniest touch. Uh, true it is that through a poor master of disdain, I uh, have endeavoured to hide a passion that is burning fires within me. But I will not be extinguished. It defies all attempts to exist and breaking forth all the more eagerly from its long restraint declares itself in words that cannot be weighed, that cannot be schooled, that should not be too severely criticised. Katisha, I cannot hope for your love. But I cannot live without it. <laughs> Don! You, whose hands still reek with the blood of my betrothed, dare to address words of passion to the woman you have so foully wronged. Kaisusha, accept my love, or I perish on the spot. Go to. Who knows so well as I that no one ever yet died of a broken heart? You know not what you say. Listen. <laughs> On a tree by a river, a little tom tit sang willow, tit willow, tit willow. And I said to him, Dicky Bird, why do you sit? Oh, willow. Is it wings or wings in legs? Body, I cry, or a claw that's a worm in your little inside? With a shake of his poor little head, he replied, Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. <laughs> I probably shall not explain as 
I die. Willow, tit willow, tit willow. He really did. All on account of a cruel little hen. Yes. <gasps> Poor little chap. It's a fetching tale and quite true. I, I, I knew the bird intimately. Did you? <laughs> he must have really loved her. Yes, his, his devotion was something extraordinary. And if I refuse you, will you go and do the same? At once. <gasps> no! Don't do it. <laughs> oh, I am a silly little goose. Go <laughs> on. And you won't hate me if I'm just a teeny wee bit bloodthirsty, will you? Hate you, Catisha? Is there not beauty even in bloodthirstiness? <laughs> My idea, exactly. <laughs>
beg your pardon, I don't think I quite caught that last remark. Mercy even for Pooba! <laughs> <laughs> My husband that was to have been is dead, and I have just married this miserable object. Eh? You've not been long about it. We were married before the registrar. I am the registrar! <laughs> well, my difficulty remains that as you have slain the heir apparent. But the heir apparent is not slain. Bless my heart, my son. And your daughter-in-law elected. Traitor, you have deceived me. Uh, yes, I believe you are entitled to an explanation, but I believe you will give it better hold than in pieces. Your Majesty, <clears throat> it is true that I stated that I had killed Nanky Poo. Yes, with most affecting particulars. Merely a corroborative detail, intended to give artistic verisimilitude to run my ball. Nor will you it. refrain from putting in your oar. Narrative. <laughs> your Majesty, it's like this. Your Majesty asked for a thing to be done, and it's as good as done. Practically, it is done, for your majesty's will is law. Your majesty says, kill a gentleman, and a gentleman is told off to be killed. Well, that gentleman is as good as dead. Practically, he is dead. So if he's dead, why not say so? I see. Nothing could possibly be more. Satisfactory. Oh, he's got that very young man. Your name's 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 your name